Two weeks ago, while discussing the Israeli-Hamas war, the leader of Iran's Islamic Republic made a direct threat against the U.S. Death to America is not a slogan, it's a policy. Well, great, but also not surprising. Destroying the West has been part of Iran's doctrine since the birth of its theocracy in 1978, when a violent revolution brought to power the most radical leader the nation had ever seen. And since then, Iran's believed mission from Allah has been to destroy the West. But it's not just Iran. In fact, it's not just Islamic jihadists. Iran's supreme leader says we kiss the hands of those who planned the attack. Now Russia is using so-called religious doctrine to justify its anti-American mission as well. War to them is an opportunity. It's a goal. And it's the only way they'll achieve what they believe they were chosen to do. So where do we go from here? Tonight, I'll show you the dangerous threat we face from an axis of evil that believes it has God on its side. Hello, America. I want you to know this program, I'm not going to advocate for war or anything else, just uh, that you are aware of what is really happening in other parts of the world. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. That's in Matthew 24, 6. The most um, used command or phrase in the Bible, 365 times, it says, do not be alarmed, do not be afraid. I see wars, I see rumors of wars, and I gotta admit, I, I'm a little alarmed, but we tell you these things, and he told us these things, so we could just be prepared mentally, physically, temporally, spiritually. Now, wars have happened all throughout history, and there's nothing new about that, but I am alarmed by the motivations behind two major wars going on right now. Whether it's by the media or the government, no one is willing to talk about the why of these two wars. Quite honestly, we thought we had something when we started doing research um, on this, and we found a treasure trove of insanity. Uh, and we actually debated whether we should show all of this to you um, because, well, you'll understand by the end of the show, we decided that you wear your big boy pants just like us. We're not going to filter things because we're worried about what you might think. I trust you to be um, reasonable and to know the facts of what is happening. You'll understand by the end of the show. So the why. Why is Russia at war with the entire Western world in Ukraine? Why is Iran choosing now to escalate against Israel? Can I ask... What justifies war for you, for America? I think most of us are in agreement that a direct attack on the United States is an obvious gimme. The defense of the homeland, okay? <clears throat> but what about an attack on our allies? What about an attack on NATO? This is where it starts to get a little shaky, especially if it's Turkey. I don't, what? It gets even more shaky when you start considering things like national interests outside of the country. For instance, you want to fight a war for oil. It's never been a really popular thing. If they threaten resources like oil, steel, carbon, chips, would that justify a war? Would it for you? If it does, is there any end to this? Because taken all together, it's not long before justification for war can be made anywhere, anytime, with anyone. For instance, on my list is genocide. But really, who's genocide? Why aren't, why aren't we doing things where we know there's genocide happening, i.e. China? Why aren't we doing that? Um, how about just flat-out evil? Well, whose definition of evil? 
For the Nazis, their justification for war was living space. They wanted more land, and they didn't care if it was already occupied. For the Soviet Union, it was the spread of global communism. And for us in the United States, it was about stopping the latter two. And typically, if we had some commercial interest somewhere in the world. I want you to consider all of this and ask yourself, what is the real reason for the current wars and rumors of wars that are happening right now? Who's fighting? How are they justifying it? And if we fail to understand this, we fail to see where we're headed. We fail to understand where our enemies are going. Look at that chalkboard and consider this context. Ukraine has proven the Russian nation and military are a lot weaker than anybody ever thought. So why are we really fighting a proxy war with Ukraine? Is it to stop Russia in the same justification we squared off against the Soviet Union? That's what they say. This is what the Biden administration is saying. And it's also what the majority of the neocons are saying. Really? Or is this about corruption, commercial interests, progressive dogma, period? I tend to lean on that one. War is currently being waged in Eastern Europe and the Middle East, and there are rumors of more wars to come. And it's all being done in the name of dogma. Globalist progressives in the West and religious fanatics in the East. Some of them truly believe it. Some of them use it as an excuse. Some of them just use it to whip their people up. It's the ones who really believe it that really concerned me. The dogma is hurtling everyone towards a larger conflict. It's just that no one's willing to talk about it. No one's willing to accept that something that disgusting is risking thousands, probably millions of lives. Tonight, I'm gonna to show you the dogma from all sides. Nothing I'm gonna show you, show you means that I think America needs to run off and fight other people's wars. To the contrary, actually, we need to fully understand what we're dealing with. How do they justify what they're doing? What are they saying to their people? How do we? And what does that mean to and for you? The globalist progressive West, which dominates nearly every government in the Western world right now, doesn't care about the Palestinian people anymore. They care about the Ukrainians. Do you remember how they think? People are not individuals. They are tools. I showed you a video for a few weeks ago from a radical leftist, Judith Baker, but I wanted to show it to you again in the current context. Watch. Um, uh, similarly, I think, uh, yes, uh, uh, understanding uh, Hamas, Hezbollah as uh, social movements that are progressive, that are on, on the left, that are part of a global left, is extremely important. That does not stop us from uh, being critical of certain dimensions of um, both movements. It doesn't... Um, it doesn't stop those of us who are interested in nonviolent politics from raising the question of um, uh, uh, of whether there are other options besides violence. Um, so again, uh, a, cr a critical, important engagement. I mean, I certainly think it should be entered into the conversation on the left. I similarly think boycotts um, and divestment procedures are, again, um, uh, an essential component of any resistance movement. Well, this is incredible to me. Um, and you saw it yesterday in action. While hundreds of thousands of people were on the mall marching peacefully for Israel and Jews, the president just released another $10 billion to Hamas's sugar daddy, Iran. Hamas and Hezbollah, terror groups directly linked to Iran. That's part of the progressive left? It doesn't make sense until you remember that for them People are merely tools to be wielded. The slaughter of thousands upon thousands of innocents is justified. And it doesn't matter how or why, as long as the progressive agenda will be accomplished. Check this out. Back in 2017, anti-Semitic flyers were found on the campus of University of Illinois, Chicago. This is the flyer. Ending white privilege starts with ending Jewish privilege. Jewish privilege? How do they seriously not know the history of the past two and a half millennia? Jews are always the first to get blamed. They're always the first to be put into a quarter. They're always the first to get rounded up and killed. So what is the motivation here? 
Well, a few days after those flyers were found in Chicago, some new ones were found. These had the hashtags Stand with Palestine and hashtag Black Lives Matter. For the left, Jews are considered white oppressors. Hamas, as a part of the so-called global progressive movement, is a useful ally. Terrorists. Now, knowing that, does anyone actually think they really care about the people in Gaza? Because 90% of them are with Hamas. 90% of them think killing Americans and Jews is okay. Do you think that the, the Gazans, the Palestinians, are really that open to transgender and gender fluidity? I don't think so. Now, do they care about the Ukrainians? They're all about a means to the end, be that money or fundamental transformation of the world. The objective is end everything the West stands for. Everything is a means to an end, despite the lives lost. They don't care, in my opinion. You can disagree with me, and I'd love to hear your argument. People are not individuals. It's the collective. They are instruments of change. This is why they want to send our sons and daughters off to war. But is that an adequate justification for you? Because it's not for me. But look at the top three justifications for war on the chalkboard. We haven't been directly attacked. That's out. Ukraine is neither an ally, nor is it part of any national interest. That's out. Israel is an ally, but they are fully capable of fighting for themselves. But those two wars have the ability of spreading and becoming much, much larger. Why? because of the West's progressive dogma. They also have a dogma driving them to fight. And it's much more dangerous. And until we start recognizing this, because we just found the connection be between Russia and Iran, and it's not just about destroying America, it's why and how. We're gonna be blindsided if everything plays out and nobody tells you the truth. So forget the bullcrap being said by our own government experts and the media. Do you really want to know what's really fueling the flames of war in Eastern Europe and the Middle East? If you do, I'll show you when we come back. Next couple of segments are going to blow your mind. Um, I've been talking to you about uh, Jace Medical now for a while, and the case for the Jace case. Um, well, it's needed now more than ever because there are critical shortages of essential drugs right here in the United States. You wouldn't think that this kind of thing would be happening here in America. Normally, it wouldn't, but these are not normal times. This is why you need to have the Jace case on hand. It's a personalized emergency medication kit that contains five essential antibiotics, which treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. It's customizable with dozens of add-on medica medications available, so you can choose the ones that best fit you and your family's needs. They even have ivermectin as an add-on option. Jace is really simple. You just go online, you fill out a form, then you get a prescription, life-saving medications, up to a year's worth, delivered right to your door giving you peace of mind. Please check them out, jacemedical.com. Use the promo code BECK at checkout and save. J-A-S-E medical.com. You, I think, are going to ask yourself why you've never heard any of this, why our government spends so much time worried about evil Christians here in the United States and then does nothing about what I'm about to show you. As I mentioned earlier, there's nothing new about the emergence of war. It's not even new for war to break out simultaneously in multiple parts of the world. But when war is justified by scripture, when the Bible and or the Koran are invoked by major aggressive countries, that should be a little worrying. What's even more worrying is when the major leaders of the world refuse to acknowledge that part. And that is exactly what's happening now. It's not accurate to call Russia and Iran an axis of evil, but they are match made in hell. And they are using words like apocalypse, antichrist, and messiah as they charge into the battle, both Christian and Muslim. If you've been watching this show for the past decade, you know who Alexander Dugan is. I've been warning about him for years. He is best known as Putin's brain or Putin's philosopher. 
His ideology is absolutely bat crap bonkers. When I first warned about him, I showed how he was organizing opposition movements in countries all over the world. His plan is to spread chaos that would set the world on fire while his home country of Russia ascended. In fact, his symbol, this symbol, it's pretty creepy. It's an old occult representation of chaos. But don't think Western experts took that part seriously. They don't. Recently, however, they have started taking seriously his geopolitical views. This is a State Department document. It was released, released three years ago, highlighting Dugan's plan for Russia. It states that Russia will, quote, divide Georgia, annex Ukraine, Finland, Serbia, Romania, Bulgaria, Greece, and gives away Azerbaijan to Iran. Hmm. Why haven't I heard that before? When you hear neocons, and now most of the Democratic Party say, we've got to stop Russia now before they invade another country. This is what they're referring to. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen, and I'm definitely not saying we need to get involved in this proxy war, but this is obviously what our government is referring to. But I'm curious, why aren't they giving us the why? Why won't they talk about this? On the very next page of this document, the State Department included two photos of Dugan and his followers fighting. Do you see the symbol on the man's shirt? In this entire 77-page report, that part is never explained. Why? Because for some reason, outside of our own, our own country, where, you know, white Christians are not involved, they refuse to link geopolitics to any kind of bad dogma. And it is the same for Iran. And I find that interesting, that Russia has chosen Iran as an ally in all of this. In fact, that State Department report was quoting from one of Dugan's books. In that book, Dugan speaks of a new moscow tehran axis. Now, why would these two strange bedfellows suddenly wake up and decide to be close friends? <clears throat> Is it oil? Is it, clearly it's not their religion. Their geopolitics. Is it similar ideology? The experts will never acknowledge that. But we now know that Ukrainian spies found Dugin's ideology so dangerous they tried to assassinate him inside of Russia. They missed and killed his daughter instead. We also now know, as per the Washington Post, that the CIA funded, equipped, and trained these guys. But the government won't speak of it. The media turns a blind eye. But Dugan is not a military officer. He is not devising strategy and ordering troops on the battlefield. It is his ideology and dogma that they are trying to assassinate. I'll get to Iran in just a few minutes. But this ideology out of Russia is what links them so closely, even intimately, with Russia. So what is the ideology? It is biblical as in seriously biblical, revelation kind of stuff. Dugan and his allies like to talk about something called Katachon. A Russian think tank with the same name was established around the time Russia annexed Crimea and invaded eastern Ukraine in 2014. Many of the uh, contributors, including Dugan himself, are now sanctioned by the United States government. So what is Katachon? Well, it comes from the Bible in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and it's talking about the man of lawlessness, also known as the Antichrist, verse 6 and 7. And this is what they say, and I quote, And now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time, for the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. So this is talking about someone's destiny to hold back the Antichrist during the end times. 
The original Greek, the one who holds it back, is called Katachon. Dugan has said that Putin actually is this person, and the Western world that is now fighting them by proxy is the Antichrist. So you know, we do a lot of research here. And most think tanks, I mean, it, I mean, it is pile after pile of academic, boring papers. But this Russian think tank has entire sermons on Katachon and the Antichrist. This would be like going to the Brookings Institute and finding a Billy Graham sermon on the book of Revelation. And it doesn't stop there. There are in-depth sermons on the meaning of Gog and Magog and the, quote, landscape of the apocalypse. Woven in between all of this apocalyptic theory at a think tank, Dugan slips articles like this in. The Third World War has never been so close after Russia invaded Ukraine last year. Dugan wrote this piece and published it on Katachon. Victory or nothing. He said that Russia's invasion of Ukraine was crossing of the Rubicon moment and that absolute victory or absolute defeat were the only two options. He even mentions that the Great Reset was one of the major catalysts for deciding that now was the time to begin the war. And if you're a Russian headed to the front lines and you're hearing that you are a holy warrior marching off to slay the Antichrist, that's kind of powerful. Whether Putin believes it or not doesn't matter. I want to play this. This is... Um, a Middle Eastern interview with Dugan that happened in February. Watch. So, if Russia begins to lose, they will use nuclear weapons, according to Dugan. Why? Because we are the Antichrist, the source of absolute evil. Did you see the things he mentions? Artificial intelligence, the destruction of the family, LGBTQ. This is meant not only to reach to Russians, but also the people in the West that value these things and their new Iranian friends. It is important that you understand people like Dugan. Dugan is an anarchist. He doesn't necessarily believe in any of this stuff. He's not a Christian, and Putin surely isn't. People even called Hitler a Christian. <clears throat> not true. Uh, first of all, you know, mass genocide is not something a Christian usually does. But this is a very rare document um, that we uh, have in the museum. I just purchased this a few months back. This is between the guy who ran Hitler's euthanasia program. He ordered all the mercy killings of thousands of retarded, deformed, mentally ill Germans, children. It was this guy. And he's writing to another guy who is um, part of the... Um, ending of Christianity. They went in and they actually tried to change the Bible and get the first thing they were going to do was get rid of the um, Old Testament because it was too Jewish. It didn't take them long to do many of the things they wanted to do. Um, that actually uh, didn't happen, but they were printing Bibles that did that, but it never had made it to the church, but they did take the picture of Christ off of the altar. So he wasn't Christian. Hitler, Putin, and I think Iran, Dugan, is using the religion in the same way that the mob and Mexican cartels do. They're not true believers, but they use true believers to do their bidding. In that sense, they're the same as the global progressive West. This is not the case for Russia's ally, Iran. They are true believers, at least those at the top. 
Apocalypse is not their tool of propaganda. It is their strategy. And I'll share that with you next. I am really honored to be able to represent preborn. Abortion has actually gone up since the end of Roe versus Wade, um, mainly because they're now just sending the abortion drug uh, directly to home. So your abortion clinic is now that young girl's bathroom in her home right down the street. It's gone up 60,000 abortions since the ending of Roe versus Wade. It's gone up. Majority of women who get abortions feel abandoned and alone. Most of them are told by their mother, you got to have an abortion, this will wreck your life. Or a boyfriend or the spouse or whoever the dad is, they also want the woman and they feel alone. This is a gap that preborn steps into. They're not a clump of scale, uh, cells. It, it is not a it's tumor in there, it's a baby. And when they provide a free ultrasound and postnatal care, they introduce the mom to her unborn child. She's twice as likely to choose life for that child. They're doing the work of God, but they need your help, especially this time of year. Uh, and a child was born. The ministry that stands in the gap empowers women and saves children. You want to help? A donation of $28 will help a woman make the choice that she won't have to regret for the rest of her life, and it gives her the ultimate blessing, life. Dial pound 250, say the keyword baby. That's pound 250, keyword baby, or visit preborn.com slash Glenn. That's preborn.com slash Glenn. When Obama was trying to get his nuclear deal done with Iran, he dispatched Ben Rhodes to pull off a little magic trick with the mainstream media. The trick was to sell Iran as a moderate Muslim nation that could actually be a trusted partner. The media bought it hook, line, and sinker, and they sold the narrative to the American people. Ever since then, foreign policy experts talk about Iran as if it's a geopolitical issue rather than a heavy religious one. This is a lie that perpetuates to this day, and I believe this lie is directly responsible for the thousands of deaths recently inflicted in Israel. When I was at Fox, I remember seeing uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad address the UN the same way every time. Saw it at CNN, too. No one in the newsroom was paying attention. Nobody. This is what he does. He says this all the time. Almighty God, all men and women are your creatures, and you have ordained their guidance and salvation. Bestow upon humanity that thirsts for justice, the perfect human being promised to all by you, and make us among his followers and among those who strive for his return and his cause. Hasten the return of the promised one, is what he usually says. He wasn't getting to the point. That is the point. And it's important he said it before and after every speech. He was talking about the return of the 12th Imam. He actually... Um, he actually, the 12th Imam has more nicknames than Apollo Creed in Rocky, honestly. The 12th Imam, the Hidden Imam, the Master of Age, the One to Arise, the Remnant of Allah, the Awaited Imam. You know, if somebody has that many nicknames, they're kind of probably pretty important, you know, or good at boxing, I don't know. The rulers of Iran are 12er Shiites. They believe in the 12th Imam, that he has already returned, but he is hidden and will reveal himself at a time of great injustice and suffering. Chaos will rack the land, but he will come back to purify the world and pave the way for the return of Jesus. Not the Jesus we're looking for, but the Jesus that comes back and says, all you Christians, you are wrong. Mohammed is God, or Mohammed is the prophet, and Allah is our God. So if you substitute the 12th Imam for Katachon, You've got a Russian-Iranian apocalyptic sandwich that doesn't taste very good. It's much messier than a meatball sub with marinara, but the same color, very red. After the magic trick by Obama uh, and Ben Rhodes, no one discussed Iran's obsession with the apocalypse and their return to a messianic war hero. 
It is now completely ignored. But before Obama's goons invaded the government, the Pentagon actually acknowledged it. This is from the U.S. War College in 2007. Quote, while all believe that serious misfortune will befall the earth prior to the Mahdi's return, some believe that his return can be expedited by initiating death and destruction upon the world. In other words, they believe they can act through violence in order to set the stage for the return of the 12th Imam. This is the entire purpose for the Iranian regime, and the experts completely disregard it. I don't want you to take my word for any of this. That's what the mainstream media does. When they allowed themselves to be mouthpieces for Obama, I want you to do your own homework. We have all of the source material up at glennbeck.com. Kind of like this one from Harvard. It states the 12th Imam is specifically written into the Iranian constitution. It goes on to say that the country of Iran is, quote, a placeholder state awaiting the emergence of the imam to whom it will relinquish all authority. So Iran was built to hasten the 12th imam um, arrival and then to be handed over to him. The Ayatollahs consider themselves as being directly deputized by the Mahdi. Again, from Harvard, quote, the broad interpretation of this theory, which has been placed in practice in Iran, grants extensive formal powers to the institution of the supreme leader under the deputyship to the hidden imam. As deputies are ordered to wage war to bring back the Mahdi, the 12th imam, none of this is hidden from the public. It's right there in black and white. The U.S. Army once accepted it. Harvard University acknowledged it. It's not coming from Alex Jones. It's coming directly from the mouths of Iranian leadership. Here's a quote from the Ayatollah that was a member of the Assembly of Experts for the Constitution of Iran. Quote, The superiority of Islam over other religions is stressed in Quran, which calls on believers to wage war against unbelievers and prepare the way for the advent of the Mahdi in conquering the world. So Obama tried to sell that Iran was being led by madmen, Ahmadinejad, as per the Obama administration when he left, so did the radical ideology. But as I just showed you, the ideology is written into their constitution. And just last week, their head guy again said, destruction of America is not, is not uh, just a slogan. It is their policy. Here's the current Iranian Revolutionary Guard commander, two weeks ago. معادل است با رخت بربستن تیرگی سیطره و ستم ستمکاران پس جهاد یک جزء قطعی از تاریخ اسلام بوده است و تا آن زمان که ظهور اتفاق بیفتد و جهان از عدل پرشود بخشی از زندگی مسلمانان به صورت اجتناب ناپذیری جنگ و کارزار با ستمکاران و مستکبران خواهد بود. All right, so their end time beliefs were the same in 1979. They're the same when Obama signed the nuclear deal. And they are exactly the same as Joe Biden yesterday gave them another $10 billion. Did we do that with, can you imagine? We want to send medicine to the little German children, so we're going to give $10 billion to Adolf Hitler. We would have never done it. Iran will wage war and wait for the return of their apocalyptic savior. Now consider the, the, that uh, the next time Iran chants death to America, consider it every time Hamas and Hezbollah and all other Iranian proxies attack Israel. Consider this as Biden gives them billions of dollars in addition. He's done it. Our government will claim they're funding a humanitarian effort. But for the zealots in Iran, this is funding for the end times. Believe it when people say it in marches on our streets. Believe it when someone says they want to kill you. Take them at their word. Back in a minute.
All right, I want to talk to you a little bit about, um, I want to talk to you about American Giant. There is something special about buying things that are made in America. And I've been telling you about American Giant for a while now because they do exactly that. But they also support other companies doing great things. So let's play, play matchmaker this week. American Giant is supporting Rescue 22. It's a nonprofit company that matches rescue dogs with veterans who have service-related disabilities. They custom train each dog to match the need of the veteran. American Giant has created a limited edition classic full zip in their signature American-made hoodie, which is unbelievable. All of the profits go to fund dogs for veterans who need one. This is an example of why America is great. American Giant, spreading goodness to the communities all over the country. Also this week, American Giant is increasing their military discount to 25%. All active reservists, National Guard, veterans, and military family members receive a 25% discount. I am proud to have American Giant as a sponsor of the program. They create jobs for Americans, make clothing with American-grown cotton, put American quality in everything that they make. Buy American-made Rescue 22 Classic Hoodie now at American-Giant.com slash Glenn. That's American-Giant.com slash Glenn. You know, the more you hear the Western so-called experts try to explain Iran or really, at this point, Russia, the more ridiculous it gets because they refuse to look at the religious aspects or the way religion is being used in those countries. And these are the same people that are now directing our foreign policy right now. Joining me from Israel is an actual expert. Joel Rosenberg lives in Jerusalem, has worked for Benjamin Netanyahu, traveled the Middle East. He has met with the King of Jordan, the President of Egypt, uh, the crown princes of both the UAE and Saudi Arabia. Also the co-founder and CEO of Near East Media, as well as the editor-in-chief of All Israel News and All Arab News. Joel, thank you. First of all, how are things in Israel? Uh, we've had better months, <laughs> Glenn, but it's good to good to be with you. I think you were, we were at Mar-a-Lago having dinner last time we saw each other, yes, but uh, we how times have changed. Yeah, yeah, it's been a brutal, grisly month, but I think the worst part about it is that so much of the world is turning against Israel and the Jewish people when we're the ones who've been facing genocide. And I think this is a game that uh, that Iran and Russia are playing and Hamas is just a pawn and Biden does not get it. So you have been, I think you might have been the guy who introduced me to the 12th Imam. I found him and I'm like, Joel, who is this guy? And you wrote a book about him. Um, Let's start with Russia. Yeah, that goes back, I think, to your CNN days. Yeah, I, it does. At one point, we did a whole week of shows about end times theology, which yeah. was uh, fascinating. And then yeah. I think they didn't want you anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know. They, they, got, <laughs> they got me out of their hair quickly. Um, yeah. So, But let's, let's add the Russia piece in. Because yeah. Russia is taking the position, at least in uh, part of the Eastern world, that they are the defenders of the faith. Um, and Dugin is extraordinarily dangerous, and now Dugin is tied directly to Iran. What do you see happening here? Yeah, traveling there, he has repeatedly and was just there again. You know, so, yeah, look, I think that people are uh, underestimating, uh, first of all, how dangerous Vladimir Putin is. Um, I, look, I know that not everybody is happy with everything the Ukrainian government has done, and I'm not either, but... But uh, Vladimir Putin, Putin is a monster. He's the only uh, world leader who's actually invading countries right now consistently. Uh, the communist Chinese are horrible, but but Putin's actually devouring neighbors. And the guy who's sort of the Rasputin of his head, his mind, his soul, is Alexander uh, Dugin. Uh, here's, a, here's a quote. I mean, we, we know we don't. You and I have talked a lot over the years, CNN, Fox, and mm -hmm. of course uh, now you know with your own company about different countries and different religions, eschatology, their end time yeah. theology. But I don't know that you and I have had the conversation much about Russian Orthodox eschatology, the way Dugan and Putin see it. Yes. Here's just a quote from one of Dugan's books, The Fourth Political Theory. Mm. The end times and the eschatological meaning of politics will not realize themselves on their own. We will wait for the end in vain, the end will never come if we wait for it, and it will never come if we don't if we do not. 
if and and so basically he goes on to talk about how Russia under Putin needs to first of all see Putin as the czar, but then go after the end of days and pursue it um like like specifically and proactively. One other quote from one of his books, uh, the meaning of Russia, according to Dugan, is that through the Russian people will be realized the end, the last thought of God, the thought of the end of the world, death is the way to immortality. This is a that this guy would be a jihadi. lunatic or a Satanist or a cultist if he wasn't actually a, a close consigliere of the most dangerous man on the planet. Yeah. And how do these two come together? I mean, one believes in Christianity. I don't know. I doubt Dugan actually believes any of this stuff. He's an anarchist. Um, but Fascist. one's Christian, one is uh, Muslim. How do they how do they join here? Well, yeah, so there, there's nothing obvious on the on the face of it why a Russian czarist authoritarian monster would Vladimir Putin would want to have anything to do with a 12th imam seeking genocidal Iranian Shia 12er like Ali Khamenei. These are two terrible tastes that don't taste great together. But something is happening, and Putin's overall philosophy of life isn't Dugan's. Dugan is whispering into mm -hmm. Putin's ear, and Putin is following the playbook. But Putin's actual personal philosophy is just create an alliance with anybody that hates America. So it doesn't really matter to Putin, okay? he I don't think he has an end times theology. I don't think he has a theology. Yeah. He is really Martin, Michael Corleone. He's the mm -hmm. godfather, right? And he he's 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 devouring anybody he can, but he needs allies. Now the Iranians actually have as you and I have talked about and if you just talked about in the last segment, they have a real eschatology and end time theology. It drives them. Uh President Biden doesn't understand it. Blinken doesn't understand it. But the reason that Putin and Hamanai are have become knit together and closer than ever is because they need each other. Putin is getting humiliated in Ukraine. And who is he turning to for weapons? Iran. Mm -hmm. And um, I just interviewed a, a security cabinet minister here in Israel, uh, Gideon Saar, uh, last week for my TV show on TVN, uh, the Christian network. Um, and 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 he said to me, and he's not thinking about eschatology. He's not thinking about the war of Gog and Magog. He's just doing a straight geopolitical calculus, Glenn. And he said the Russian-Iranian alliance has intensified since the Ukraine war started. And now Russia has very few allies, obviously China. But China doesn't want to give Putin too much help, right? Because ultimately China wants to lead the world. They don't want Putin running it. So so. So Iran is becoming the indispensable ally of Vladimir Putin in a very desperate moment. And what he, and what Gideon Saar, the, the Israeli minister, uh, security cabinet minister, told me, so he's on the inner circle here. He said, this is not coming for free. Right now, Iran is in the stronger position, and they're going to want something. Mm. And what, he, what he's worried about, what I'm worried about, is when does Iran say, listen, Putin, you played footsie with Netanyahu for a long time. But whose ally are you? Are you going to come help us finish off this 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 stain on the world, right? This cancer that Iran always calls uh, Israel. Or are you going to be an ally of Israel? And it, it, that is that is a terrifying thought, just straight geopolitically, right? But if you add biblical eschatology. The Russian-Iranian alliance that's described in Ezekiel 38 and 39, specifically where Russia doesn't specifically want to go to war with Iran against Israel, but the Bible described as God himself puts hooks in their jaws, the jaws of Russia, the Russian dictator, to pull them into battle. Why? To bring them into judgment. Then that gets that starts to get both sobering and interesting, uh, unless you live here. Yeah, and then it's you know that is downright scary. Yeah, I think it's gonna you know it's it's gonna happen everywhere when it when it finally does happen. Um, but um, is there the president yesterday <clears throat> giant march for Israel and Jews yesterday, 
And at the same time, the president released another $10 billion to Iran. We wouldn't have done it for the Nazis, even if it was for children's medicine. We would have given it to the Red Cross. We would not have, we wouldn't, we wouldn't do this. Why are we doing this, Joel? Well, look, President Biden is bipolar or perhaps schizophrenic when it comes to the Middle East. I think he actually genuinely, his heart does love Israel and he thinks he's doing the right thing. But he is determined and has been for you know the last 15 years or so to buy off the Iranian regime, thinking if you just give them enough billions, they will play nice. And there is no evidence of that, just to the contrary. So first of all, for Biden not to show up at the biggest pro-Israel rally in the history of the U.S.-Israel relationship for 75 years is insane. I mean, I have issues with Donald Trump, but he was pro-life. And when there was a pro-life rally, he showed up, right? right. It's just, just what you do. <laughs> um, so Biden doesn't do that. And on the same day, try, you know, gives another $10 billion uh, to Iran, shows you that he's conflicted. And that conflict is sensed in Tehran. They get it. They see it and they are exploiting it. And I, you know, I I I've been saying for the last two years, this is going to be the most dangerous two years in world history. Why? Yeah. Because every world leader sees Biden as weak. And then we saw what happened with Russia invading Ukraine. Now we see Iran using its proxies to commit genocide or try here. <laughs> and then you got the Chinese warming up in the bullpen to go after Taiwan and North Korea's firing missiles. Um, Iran, Iran is driving this thing right now, um, but they could drag Putin in in an incredibly dangerous way. That is, and, and Dugan, to go back to the beginning, Dugan has been encouraging right. Putin uh, to build this alliance, make it stronger. And now he's actually you know gone multiple times, including recently, uh, to Iran. Joel, thank you so much for everything that you do all the time. I appreciate having you on and uh, you bringing some light to this. Thank you. It's great to be here um, tomorrow sure. on the radio show, we are renewing the covenant made by our pilgrims in George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Uh, it is essential that we turn our face back to God, confess our sins, uh, and, um, and beg his forgiveness. Um, that's what a covenant is. We are a covenant nation. We have violated it. You know, you make a case, maybe we are the place of the Antichrist. I don't know. But we won't if we all turn back to God. Tomorrow on radio, The Covenant. Don't miss it. Good night.